Um, I'm Aaron, I'm the head of marketing and strategic accounts at Lumity. We're a data-driven broker. Uh, we're based in the Bay Area, but obviously we have uh, clients here in Boston, New York, and the Bay Area. So I um, wanted to sort of give a quick format for tonight. It's a little bit different than I think what some of you may, may be used to, um, but it's definitely a format that I think will give everyone an opportunity to really um, share your own story and also listen to other folks. Uh, really, the, the, the focus of today should be you guys. Uh, we're really here to give a quick insight and overview into sort of our respective domains. Uh, but after this, each, uh, each person comes up and does a quick 10-minute um, presentation, we'll actually split up into some focus groups and just have a, a discussion. Some of you already might have questions about parental benefits. Uh, some of you may just be here to learn. Um, so whatever it is, we want to hold the container for you um, to get what you want out of the event tonight. Um, so uh, with that, uh, I will go ahead and just start off and introduce uh, Becca from Helper. Um, she's our co-sponsor for the night, and um, I'll let her go ahead and take the mic. Thank you guys so much for coming out. I know this is really tough on a work night. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to stand over here because I have to look at the screen. <laughs> Great. So I am a co-founder of Helper, and we provide family support benefits. Uh, just a little background on myself. I've been in the child care industry for the last 15 years. Um, and I've done everything, every end of it, um, from managing a boutique child care company to working in the foster system, um, and now our company is really focused on providing child care, prim primarily ch child care is our main offering, but um, really supporting families on, on an employee level so that they, so that companies can um, support their, uh, the parents on their team. So if you do know me, you've probably heard me talk about parent resource groups a million times this past year because it's uh, what I've been really excited about. Um, and if you don't know me, I just wanted to really introduce the idea. I don't know um, how many of, I guess, actually I would love to ask really quickly, even though we'll break into smaller groups, how many people here have um, a parent employee resource group at the company that they're at right now? Just to kind of get an idea. Okay, cool. So we, so we have a few in the crowd. Um, uh, the reason that I am really passionate about parent resource groups, I'll, I'll get into it, is because I think they're a really beautiful way of really, um, focusing on community within a company. And so we, you know, we're here, we're talking about benefits and there's tons of solutions that are paid services, but there's so much that we can do to just um, inspire community. So, is it on? Oh, sure. Okay, so we have, yeah, that works, all good. Cool. So, um, what so what we we've been saying at helper is prgs are the new pta so i really want to kind of focus on why we talk about them this way and give a little bit of um, statistical basis for it so um you know our, the idea for me is really that when you provide the tools for your team to connect and share in one another's parenting journey you create the space for an inclusive and thus productive workspace or workplace so um sherm who, uh, if you if you guys didn't hear and you are part of SHRM, there's a you can get a credit for being here today, um, towards certification. So SHRM cited a workplace um, a workplace magazine survey, and it was on the effects of work relationships on organizational culture and commitment. And 61% of um, said that colleagues support um, said colleagues support helps them through a challenging time in their lives, such as difficult pregnancy, caregiving of aging parents. So what I guess these next few slides are really focused on are just how important it is um, to have friendship and work pals. And that's really the idea of you know, what an uh, employee resource group, of course, uh, allows for. So 55% um, said work relationships were very too extremely important to their quality of life. Um, and then 
what we're seeing has been a real shift for, obviously we all talk about how the workplace is shifting for millennials. Millennials are mission driven. They like working in teams. Um, and that's really changed the way in which they are motivated by the people in the space that they're working with. So um, we also looked at a LinkedIn survey of about 12,000 employees that um, answered a question between ages 18 to 24, said that having workplace friendships make them happier and more motivated. And I thought this is so interesting that this is compared to 5% of baby boomers uh, who share this feeling. So we're seeing like a really drastic change in the way people are looking at, um, you know, the way that they function in the workspace. Um, so the idea for, for this is really just, yes, community is important. We talk about this all the time, but obviously when we're talking about it in a corporate setting, there is a bottom line. And we know that companies need to see this as they're investing in, um, in benefits and different initiatives in the company. So I know I've been reading a lot off of these slides, but I'm just going to go with it one more time here. So uh, people with work pals are less likely to accept an offer for a new job outside their company, and the likelihood of their staying put, uh, staying put increases with the number of workplace friends that they have. So 62% of employees with one to five work friends said they would reject a job offer. That's a pretty massive statement in my opinion. So um, I, you know, again, I talk about community all the time, and it's really important to have these statistics to back it up because I, I think it really does matter. Um, and that increases to 70% to those with 6 to 25 friends at work, which is also a really interesting number. 25 is a lot, so those are some really busy people. But um, that being said, I thought that was some really interesting, um, just some interesting statistics on why these, why these initiatives really matter. So um, what we've been doing this past year is um, at, at Helper, we have backup and wellness child care support. But we also do various programs, such as a return to work program, which is basically helping um, parents find uh, sustainable primary child care for their first year uh, back in the workplace. And we, do, um, we also help companies in creating these parent employee resource groups. So what I wanted to talk about a little bit is, first of all, we're always here to support those initiatives. So if it's something that you as a company want consulting on, we can do that. But I also want to be here as a guide um, and if you're, if you're thinking about doing this yourself or your company is talking about it, these are the, our findings as to what have been, what's been most successful and important in this process. So um, a most inclusive and integrated approach for parent resource groups is uh, removing vendor barriers. So we know that there are a lot of companies that have their mom groups or they've had their women groups that have kind of, um, you know, veered off and then created their, I'm sorry, their women's groups have veered off and created a mom's group. Uh, well, I think that's really awesome. I think that this needs to be a larger conversation in which, first of all, we're not as focused on gender identity, but it also really pushes the conversation in terms of who is responsible for, um, you know, for childcare and rearing your children. So not always talking about it as a mom's responsibility, but really talking about it from the dad's perspective too. So, and so I know that there are, um, you know, certain topics that women really feel most comfortable in a safe space with each other. I do think it's important that you're supporting that with also a more inclusive, uh, non-gendered work uh, resource group. Um, also, we've seen that it's really a great opportunity or whenever you can to include co-parents who are not the employees of the company. So if that's an engagement event that's sponsored through the company in some form to invite the co-parents to be there, I think it's really important for uh, companies to remember that when they have an employee, if they have a partner or they have children, that those people are the ones who are helping to support their careers. And so um, we have, you know, there's a lot of anecdotal things I can say. We're on a bit of a time crunch. So I, that being said, I think it's just a, a really great thing to um, make sure that all ends of the family are really experiencing the benefits of what the company is offering. Um, so also promoting workday participation. So it's great when you can do things outside of office hours, but to be able to do lunches and stuff during the workday, again, we're talking about parents. So you guys are awesome for being here late uh, in the evening, but that's not always possible for a lot of families. And then also utilizing your current vendors in this process. So um, it's my opinion that these people should be your, these companies should be your partners. And if, uh, if there's any way you can use those partners in the employee resource group 
like process. So for example, with Helper, we like working with employee resource groups, even if we haven't, um, if we haven't developed them in any way, we like to partner to be there for events so that parents can meet babysitters of ours. So we do speed dating events, or we can, you know, come in to share about how our benefit works. So if your partners aren't willing to do that, I think it's really important to take a look at what, you know, how supportive they are of your of your company and maybe start thinking about other vendors who are actually looking at the engagement piece of what of what they're doing because as we all know in this benefit space engagement is a really huge part of actual implementation of benefits um, so when we talk about the major tenets of and, uh, areas of focus with these groups it's uh, community so obviously really getting people together and and supporting and these workplace friends so that people can, can feel comfortable to, to share in their life experiences. Um, education, learning about different, um, different you know, processes and care philosophies that are out there with parenting. Obviously, anyone who has kids knows who have kids or don't have kids know there's a lot to learn about having children. And it's a really great opportunity for, to, um, to use those, these groups as a way to bring in other resources to help, um, help with that. So for example, in LA, we'll do, um, uh, we work with a, a, a group that tells parents about what type of daycare philosophies are out there. Um, and then resource sharing. So when we talk about uh, resource sharing, that's anything from sharing like meal planning ideas to care shares where you're actually having um, support from another parent on your team to help pick up your kids and, and vice versa. So um, the last thing we focus is really workplace initiative development. And this is really a more uh, specific focus that we see in other uh, employee resource groups. Uh, and, and this I think is just as important with parents as well. These would be more about talking about the actual benefits the company is offering, um, maybe maternity and paternity leave, primary, secondary care offering, and being able to commune as a group to talk about like what your true needs as an employee are. Um, so yeah, just to give you a quick idea of our process, it's basically, uh, and this is something I want to offer to everyone and think about these, this process for yourself, not just through, through Helper, but um, really providing a survey to assess your team's specific interests in commuting. Again, that, those four uh, pieces that I just mentioned, analyze those results, develop a calendar for meetups and really stick to it, um, guiding agenda and programming, and then hosting workshops, engagement events, and assisting in organize, uh, organizing resource sharing. So um, this is just a quick little synopsis, and I also will say I get really nervous when I'm talking at people, so apologize if this wasn't uh, as as insightful as it could be, but that being said, I'm here to share and I'm really good at actual conversations so we can talk about all the ideas that I have for your company. Um, let us know if we can help in any way. And, and like I said, for me, this isn't just about like always about paid, paid uh, services or something. This is something that I'm, I'm really passionate about. I think that, you know, the, the future of our, our culture really depends on community. So um, thank you so much. And Can everybody hear me? Okay, good. Um, my name is Denise Jackson. Um, I have known Becca for a few years and known Erin from Lumity um, for a couple of months now. Um, just to give you a little bit about my background, um, I've been working in the space for, gosh, I'm dating myself, about 13, 14 years now. Um, I, I worked previously at Active.com, I was at Hulu, um, I was at Bird, and now just moved to a new startup. So I've seen everything from companies that were already at 750 employees that went to, you know, several thousand employees to somewhere like Bird that went from 20 employees at the beginning of this year to 600 employees in just a couple of months, um, and now at a new startup. And so I've seen everything from every stage. And one of the big things, especially when we're talking about parental benefits is why do we need that? 
we have all of these other benefits. Why is it important? And so I thought that that's what I would talk to you guys about today. Um, because regardless of the stage that we're at, the size that we're at, um, this is one of those benefits that I think can really um, push forward some of our goals, some of our initiatives and the things that we, we want to get accomplished. Um, so kind of to get started, um, I kind of, uh, we had a round, like a, uh, a networking event a couple of months ago with, um, um, with a, a small group of us here in LA. And what we found was there are, what they initially started talking about was, you know, the three groups that we typically talk about. We talk about millennials, we talk about Gen X, and we talk about baby boomers. And millennials at this point are taking up the majority of our workforce at 41%, um, Gen X at 33%, and then um, our baby boomers at 26%. Um, but when I, oops, sorry. When I am looking at this, when I'm thinking holistically and I'm thinking strategically on how to enroll, um, what new benefits to roll out, um, one of the things I've started to take a step back at is think about just because I'm one of those people that I pretend like I cross the line between millennial and Gen X, even though I know I'm probably more on the Gen X side, but I get where every, the things that people talk about with millennials and, you know, meeting, um, growing up with the internet and you know all of those type of things versus but i also get why do we have to give them everything i also I get all of those things um so i try and look at it at life stages rather than look at looking at it as um you sit in this bucket millennials want this if you're in gen x and they want this because although i'm gen x i also don't have kids and so i think it's more important for us to take a look at where people are at um, so I try to look at it as recent grads, um, people who have recently graduated, their needs are a little bit different um, than somebody who is um, growing in their career. Maybe they don't have kids yet. Maybe they don't have plans on having kids anytime soon um, and um, have different needs than maybe a recent grad would. Um, I look at people who are just starting out in the family planning, even maybe it's just a thought that they're thinking about something in the back of their mind, or they're already kind of in the process of um, trying to have kids. Um, then there's people who have young children, their needs are a little bit different. Um, and I'm, this is just kind of everyone else. Uh, I couldn't find one icon, that image for everyone else, but this is you know, people maybe who are a bit more mature, who have been working for a while, maybe have older children. Um, it feels like a, maybe the kids are graduating. Um, their needs are different than everyone else's. Um, and so one of the things that we've kind of found with people who are recent grads, some of the things that are very important to them are flexibility, they like free stuff. I hear people walking around, is this free? Is there free lunch? Is there, like they just want free stuff. Um, so making sure they have free stuff and then education assistance, things like tuition reimbursement, student loan reimbursement, those are important. Um, for people who are in that teetering before they start to start family planning or maybe they just never want to have, they're not gonna have families. They want things like financial wellness, they want gym stipends, um, pet benefits is, are really important. I start talking about all the parental benefits and they're like, I have a dog. And so um, what type of benefits we can offer them? Um, fertility, just be, it's because maybe they are getting older and they're like, I wanna freeze my eggs or I wanna do those type of things. So um, fertility benefits are important to people who don't have families and aren't even thinking about having families. Um, and career planning is important to them. Um, people who are younger families or are just getting started maybe in that family planning um, stage, um, they're also interested in fertility benefits. They wanna know once I have kids, is my employer going to start offering childcare? Um, what type of career planning? Because even though I'm having a family, I also wanna grow my career. It's not a one or the other thing. Um, and then also financial wellness, but their financial wellness needs may be more like life insurance or buying a home. So their needs may be a little bit different. Um, then they start having kids and they want to know about childcare. They wanna know about college planning and 529 plans. Um, 
career planning because now their kids are a little bit older and maybe they want to take a step um, farther in their career and ready to make that next step. And now they're starting to think about, oh, crap, now I'm retiring soon. Um, that's coming sooner than I thought. And when you start having a family, life insurance and those type of things um, start to become more important. And then um, in the end, college planning um, is important. Um, to talking about retirement benefits, legal assistance, will planning um, is extremely important. Life insurance, um, donation, matching, and um, elder care, because as people are getting older, their parents also may be getting older. So those are some important things to keep in mind as well. Obviously today, we're talking about parental benefits. Um, and so I wanted to, there's not, a per, that sometimes um, people have asked me in the past, like, when should we do this, um, executives, or like when I'm, when I'm talking about our strategy, um, do we need to do this now? Yes, do it now, um, because it doesn't really matter where you're at in the stage of your, of your company. If you're a startup, if you have 3,000 people, there's a perfect, this is the perfect time to get started in offering these benefits. Uh, it helps with attraction. So when we are talking about these are the benefits we offer, you don't know what stage someone's at in their life. Just because they're in an entry level position, they may, have, they may be at a different stage. Um, or maybe they're a bit older, but they're thinking about family planning even though they've been in their career for a long time. So it's gonna help attract, um, offering these type of benefits will help attract um, new talent. Um, it helps with diversity, especially as we're trying to get more women in the workforce. Um, it's helping with diversity and, and um, even people who may be a little bit older wanting to stay. And so you're having that diverse, um, com you're having that diverse population. And then retention um, is another big one that uh, once you start offering these benefits, especially if you're not offering them now, um, it will help keep the people like, um, it will help keep um, your employees um, that you currently have. So I was just gonna run through some quick ideas just in case you guys wanted some ideas on some things that you can do. The first few are things that most of us are already doing like a dependent care FSA, um, extended maternity leave um, is a great one. Um, and um, extended parental leave, because it's important to separate the two. It's not just maternity leave. Um, and also having a separate parental leave that's tacked onto that that everyone can take advantage of. Um, and a lot of us, especially I'm assuming most of us are in, um, tech com from tech companies, flexible scheduling is one of those ones that most of us have um, as well. And then new baby gifts. I think most of us are probably doing that, but if you're not, it's a huge win if somebody is not expecting to get a gift, even if it's like blankets, onesies, anything like that. Um, those are great to offer. Um, but some things that not all of us have, I know a lot of us, we have to have lactation rooms, but it shouldn't just be a closet um, with a chair and the things that you have to have. Make it comfortable. You're in there. I, I don't have kids, but I know that you're in there for a while, I think. Um, and that you are, um, you want to make sure it's comfortable, that there's a refrigerator, there's nice things. Um, uh, it's a nice, comfortable place to be at for however long you need to be in there. Um, company provided breast pumps. Um, they're about $1,500 on Amazon. And employees can actually purchase the kits that attach to it. But it's just nice to not have to carry that pump around with you. So I've heard, um, you don't have to carry that pump around with you and there's a kit that you just keep in your office, in the room, and it's just one less thing that new moms have to deal with. Um, adoption assistance is a huge one because again, we don't know, just because we offer fertility benefits, it's not gonna solve the needs for everybody. So I'm um, offering adoption assistance. Um, paid time off um, to volunteer is huge and I think making it broad um, if you're not, if you don't have a flexible PTO policy and you have a vacation or a PTO policy, um, add in a couple of extra days to volunteer and encourage people to volunteer at their school um, because they may not realize that that's something that their children's school, they may not realize that that's something they can do. So um, encourage them to, if, if it's two or three days a year that you take off, add that in there of, of the suggestions of things that they can volunteer at. Theme park discounts because everyone loves theme parks and they can take their kids there. Um, meals for new parents could be a huge win. So if you're thinking of a package to give to new parents, 
the um, last thing someone's really thinking about is what they're going to cook when they have a brand new baby at home. So think about sending new um, uh, meals to their home. Backup childcare um, is something that's been a huge win um, when I've uh, when I have introduced that, um, working with groups like Helper to put something like that in place um, to help support parents, not only when their child is sick, but also just wellness care. If you just need a night off or you need a date night, um, telling um, your, your employees that they, have, they can um, take a night off and it's on us is a huge win and you guys will look like heroes. Um, Child care at company events, a lot of times there are company events and people can't come because there's, uh, they don't have a babysitter, they don't want to pay for a babysitter. You can use groups like Helper to um, come on site or go to an offsite location where everyone's kids will be and then you can go and enjoy your night and not have to miss out on things because you don't have a babysitter. Um, On-site child care is a huge win and if you can get a co-op um, with other organizations to kind of put something together. Um, that would be something that um, um, I know a lot of our team members have um, asked for. Um, and then fertility coverage, enhancing that. Um, if you can remove limits, that's great. But if you can't, um, at least adding in some sort of fertility care um, benefits a lot of people. And then um, SNU. I don't know if you guys have heard of SNU. Um, this was something, it's a smart sleeper. Write it down, look it up. It's great. It's from everyone that I know that's had it, um, it's been a life send, and they, it's a smart sleeper that can tell when your baby's crying and will put your baby back to sleep. Um, and they have a rental program for companies. Um, so if you, um, it's, a, it's like $100 a month or something like that um, to rent the snoo, and then you just return it after six months. So that, is, that was a huge win also. So when we put in the backup childcare and the snoo, I, you would have thought that I just gave some parents the world um, and it wasn't a huge deal for us. So I know I'm running a little bit over, so I'm gonna talk really fast. Um, why is it important? Um, it's because I know it's, you care, and I, it's not, uh, you don't want it to appear that like, oh, we care, like you honestly care about the, the um, well-being of your team members or else you guys wouldn't be here. Um, and I will say that regardless of the life stage that someone has been at, when I've implemented some of these programs, people email me that aren't even thinking about having kids and saying, thank you so much for offering this. I don't have kids, but I appreciate that I work for a company that's doing this for parents. So just the fact that you're offering these benefits, whether or not someone will ever use them, everyone in the company will appreciate them. Um, that's all I have. Um, my contact info, if you want to reach out, if you want to talk, I like nerding out on benefits. So um, if you guys want to talk about this after today, um, feel free to reach out. Um, I'd be more than happy to talk to all of you guys. Cool. Thank you. Hello? Can you guys hear me? Yes? Okay, cool. I think the sound hopefully works. Hi guys, uh, my name is Rahab Hamad and I am the benefits manager at SNAP. Uh, I have been at SNAP for almost three years now and in the tech industry they usually go with dog years so I've been there for like 29 years <laughs> pretty much. Um, and I'm going to go over our family friendly benefits and the benefits that we offer at SNAP and how it developed. Uh, the first thing I wanted to show you guys 
is we recently hosted our very first Bring Your Kids to Work Day event. We started out in New York um, and then just hosted one in Santa Monica. And this Friday, we're going to host one as well in Seattle. But we created a recap video of our experience in Santa Monica and the experience that the kids have. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Hopefully it Is the sound? Sorry guys for the sound. Santa Monica um, event, we had 90 kids and 75 parents, which was pretty awesome. Um, and with the Bring Your Kids to Work Day events, what we really focused on is making it educational for a lot of the kids. Because growing up, I would always think of Bring Your Kids to Work Day where you would just go and sit with your parents next to the desk and just watch what they did. Um, so we wanted to make sure to have this interactive. So kids created a little geo filter, a lens studio, and just understood what the values were about SNAP, which is really important to us. Um, I wanted to share something that we wrote about uh, diversity and inclusion. Um, and it says diversity and inclusion is about designing a workplace that draws out the best of each person because of who they are. We want you to come to work and embrace your creativity and live in the moment. There's a generational shift in what kind of value we place on diversity. Diversity is less a moral responsibility and more simply the best way to achieve results. I strongly believe that diverse teams ultimately perform better and in order to grow as a company, we need to ensure that all of our employees feel valued and bring their full, full selves to work every day. And one way that we've done that at SNAP is offering very strong family-friendly benefits. Um, this is a quote directly from our CEO that we share with all of our new employees every single week at New High Orientation. We have a benefits presentation that's about 45 minutes long, and we always start it with this quote directly from our CEO that represents what um, we believe in offering with our benefits. It says, building a team is the most important thing you do, and if you don't genuinely just love the people you work with and take care of them and care about their families and their lives, then it's a non-starter because you're not going to be able to build a great team. And this really resonates a lot with our benefits philosophy because we've always focused on offering protective benefits versus versus benefits. We always want to make sure to take care of not just employees, um, but employees and their families. And how we've done that is first with our family planning and support. So they can leave. 
Um, so we want employees to know that it's your choice on when to start a family and want, we want to empower you to make that choice on when the right decision is. Um, and so we just want to be sure to offer you um, the amount of choices, enough choices. Uh, so the first one is comprehensive medical. So at SNAP, we offer three medical plans that are available at no cost to all employees and all of their dependents. And then we also have a buy-up option for employees if they're looking for additional coverage. Um, a really great benefit that we offer that I highlight on our, our comprehensive medical is we cover transgender services. So all of it is covered. Another great thing that we recently embedded into our medical plan is our egg and sperm freezing and infertility coverage. Um, it was carved out previously. And so this year we went self-insured and so we decided that we want to embed it in our medical plan. So not only employees get to benefit from this, but their dependents as well. So they can utilize the eggs and sperm freezing and also infertility, which covers about up to $40,000 for any of these services. Um, there seems to be a lot of negative press uh, about egg freezing with tech companies. That really says that employees, that tech companies are kind of promoting egg freezing as a way to keep employees in the workforce, but that's never been our intention. How we've always decided to, how we've always wanted to advertise it to employees is that we provide you choice. Um, as you'll see from all of the benefits that we offer, it's comprehensive medical, infertility, surrogacy. So we want to help you with all the family planning and we added egg freezing just to provide you with additional choice so that you can make your decision whenever you're ready. Um, making parenthood possible. So we wanna make it possible for every parent. And how we've done that is with, we also offer surrogacy and adoption assistance. So after you've been at SNAP for one year through our surrogacy assistance program, you can utilize um, the, sur the surrogacy assistance if you're medically unable to carry a child due to a medical condition or gender. And we'll reimburse up to $80,000 net towards any surrogacy expenses that you incur. Surrogacy on average costs about $100,000 to $125,000. So this covers a really good chunk of it. And we also give you the time off. So we'll give you 100% paid time off. A lot, of a lot of companies really look at surrogacy assistance and they think, that's a lot of added cost. But if you really think about how many people are actually going to utilize it in the company, it's not that much of a high added cost. And when you present it to employees, even that will never use this benefit, they appreciate it so much from the culture and how much you want to take care of your employees that it really makes a big difference. Um, another really cool benefit that we offer is the adoption assistance program. So all employees will reimburse up to $10,000 for every child that you adopt. And you're also able to get reimbursed um, to take time off. So up to eight weeks of 100% paid time off. Uh, and this is our first surrogate baby. So super cute. Okay. Um, bonding time. So for our new parents to take time off when they're ready for maternity and paternity leave with our paternity leave program, so new fathers, after they've been here for four months um, at SNAP, they're eligible to use our paternity leave so they can take eight weeks, which is two months of 100% paid time off. And then new mothers get four and a half months, so 18 to 20 weeks of 100% paid time off. The bonding time for both of them is actually the same. So with new mothers, it's 18 to 20 weeks because a new mother that's pregnant is actually going through its disability. And so she has four weeks before and six weeks after that's covered 100% pay. And then we made sure that the bonding time is the same. So they also get that additional two months. It's even between mothers and fathers. And you can also take the state leave on top of that. So if you need an additional six weeks through paid family leave through the state, then you can definitely still take that time off as well. So with all of the benefits that we are offering to the employees, such as surrogacy assistance, infertility, egg freezing, we want to be able to provide a resource for employees so if you were interested in egg freezing or IVF, you don't, sometimes people don't know where to start or who to ask. Sometimes they'll ask their friends and they just need to get a resource to go to or even doctors to talk to. And that's why we partnered with Maven Clinic. Um, Maven Clinic is available to all of our employees and their dependents uh, at no cost. And it's really just a resource for employees to go to, to have everything that they need to be prepared for whatever service they're going to use, even if they're having a baby for them and their dependents. So fertility, maternity, um, postpartum, and return to work, they cover all of these. Uh, this is a great way as well if you're expecting large claims or if you've gone self-insured to focus on um, lowering your claims or also just to um, 
kind of tech events and be ready to provide employees with this resource that's amazing for them and uh, their dependents. A really cool thing with Maven Clinic too that we've used is there's a, uh, there's a network for women to use and they can connect with all different women that are using Maven Clinic and ask questions and get different responses from doctors and from different people that are also using the app. Um, one really cool thing that we recently launched is a return to work program. So everyone has always been happy with our benefits, but then when a lot of maternity, a lot of mothers are returning from work, they're really worried about coming back to work when they've been off for four to, for about four to six months. Um, that can be a lot in a tech company, for example, because you can come back, you can have a lot of different new team members. There's a lot of different policies in place, and so it can be really stressful. And you're always looking for childcare, for example, when you're returning to work. Uh, so one thing that we did that I'm really excited about is we partnered with Helper. Um, uh, for our return to work program. So new mothers uh, that are returning to work will have send them to helper and they'll get a specialist at helper that'll help them find um, a full time nanny or child care services, which is really cool. And then through Maven, we have a return to work program for um, for managers. So there are a lot of times there are managers that are not prepared of how to um, work with someone that's gone on maternity leave. It could be a new manager that has never experienced someone going on maternity leave and having to cover for the person or respond to them. So we have a playbook that's available with managers, for managers through Maven that just helps them through the entire process as well to keep them prepared. Um, some family friendly programs that we've offered, as Denise mentioned, the SNU, which is really cool. We launched that this year, the Smart Bassinet. Um, and employees have gone crazy over the SNU, which is amazing. Um, so we cover this new for the first six months of age for all, um, for all kids. And then new mothers that are returning from leave that are traveling on business will cover the um, shipment for breast milk delivery. Uh, if you're traveling on business uh, through Milk Store. We have backup care. So we also offer through Bright Horizons and Helper. Uh, we offer backup care options. And then one thing that we offer as well that's separate from maternity and paternity leave is through Wealthy, which is support for um, aging and aging loved ones. So for example, it can be tough if you have, if you're taking care of a parent um, or a sibling that has an illness and we want it to be able to provide support for employees and through Wealthy, they can get connected to a specialist and it's really like a healthcare assistant. And that person will just help the employee with every step of the way of refilling prescriptions for my mom, for example, if she's sick and I'm taking care of her, handling prior authorizations. Um, they will work with me every step of the way. And that's why we offer Wealthy, just to make sure that we cover to help employees in every single way, not just with maturity and paternity, but also taking care of your parents and taking care of your siblings or even helping with yourself. If you have a medical condition, it can be really stressful to be working full time and have to handle all of those tasks that are involved outside of work um, relating to medical care. How we support our SNAP parents. Um, one really cool thing is our custom baby swag. It took us a year to put together our really cool box for, um, for new babies. A lot of times, a lot of employees that started with us, they would come and they'd say, where's my baby cash? Or where is this really cool benefit that we're all, all these tech companies? And we didn't want to just give people money for having a new baby and say, here's this really cool thing. We wanted to provide them with a gift that would really make a difference in their life and they could take pictures of it and they could experience it and not forget it because it's just, it's a really thoughtful way to provide something versus just handing some people, handing someone money for having a baby. Um, so we created a ba baby swag box so it's a, there's a cute um, card that arrives and then they get a swaddle and there's a lot of different, um, there's a organic cotton swaddle, there's a lot of onesies and it's just a really cute baby gift that arrives that we send to all of our employees, whether they work in the US or even outside of the US, we'll still ship it to all, to all employees. Um, another cool thing is we created a SNAP parents group. Uh, it's, it was really simple, it was really just through a Google chat SNAP parents group. I, when we first put it together, a lot of times employees were saying, I wish there was a way to connect with other SNAP parents. So we created the SNAP parents group and literally overnight there was about 250 employees that joined. And it was just a way for employees to ask each other questions and connect 
and find out what nannies are using, what childcare are using. And this group honestly overwhelmed me with how amazing it was with everyone just having all different ideas and connecting about what the what their student experience was, what their experience with helper was. So a really cool thing to do that's really easy is just to create a SNAP parents group. Even if it's on Slack or Google chat, parents will chat and they'll meet up over the weekends and just creates this community that's absolutely amazing. Uh, one thing that made a huge difference in our lives at SNAP is all of the parties that we would always hold and all the events, we would always provide employees with Uber codes or Lyft codes for drinking, for example, or for any parties, but parents were never able to attend because they would say, well, I don't have anybody to watch my kids. Um, and when we talked to helpers, so amazing because they said, we can create a code for you. So the same way that we have Uber codes and Lyft codes, we provide all of our employees a helper code. So if they need a sitter so they can attend all of our events and experience all the events that we hold, they can attend. So for all of our events, we always provide them with an Uber and Lyft code and then a helper code to have a sitter at their home. And we cover the full cost for that. Um, there's also a lot of really cool classes that we would hold. So uh, CPR classes. We had the American Red Cross come on site and hold some CPR classes for adults, children, and infants. Um, we do a lot of panels and speaking for parents. Um, so we've had a mental health panel. We've had a panel where we partnered with Fertility IQ. And it was simply honestly just emailing with someone and saying we'd like you to come talk about um, IVF or come talk about egg freezing and just provide employees with a resource to help them understand and kind of get started. Uh, bring your kids to work day. You guys saw the video. We held our first bring your kids to work day, which was really cool. Um, through our amazing wellness program, we provide employees with a Headspace membership. So for pregnancy and for kids. And then we also hold a lot of really cool SnapFit events. SnapFit is our wellness program. Um, Jackie, our wellness manager is here. So feel free to talk to her about some really cool programs that she's held for a lot of our parents. Um, so our wellness program is not just about providing employees with gym discounts. It's very, um, there's four different pillars. So it's body, mind, money, and health. Um, and one thing that we've done is we've held workouts for parents and their kids so they can join together. And there's a lot of different events that we've held that way. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you guys is from our Bring Your Kids to Work Day event. Um, we had, our, we had the kids join us for an interview. So our SNAP values are to be kind, smart, and creative. And we wanted to present our values to our employees from a kid's perspective. And so we went ahead and interviewed kids and asked them, what does it mean to you to be kind? What does it mean to be creative? What does it mean to be smart? Um, and I want to show you guys what the kids answer, just so it would change your perspective on how simple it is just to be kind and to be smart and creative. Um, and here it is. That's it. Thank you, guys.
There's still time for a 10 second, everyone stand up and stretch. And touch your toes and lead everyone through some vinyasas. Okay, we're done. Ready? Everyone ready? Um, Rohab, Denise, thank you so much for that. Um, and that was definitely bleeding edge stuff. And um, one of the things I'm also very mindful of is the fact that uh, there are a lot of companies out there um, with the Rohabs and the Denises of the world to really move the envelope forward. So from a cultural perspective, I definitely think that we do need more people with that activist mentality um, to drive the culture forward. Um, the data that I'm sort of showing you guys here today is based off of a sample set of about 150 respondents from, up from our parental benefits survey. Uh, there is a distribution here that you guys can see, and the survey is actually still open, so if you want to participate, we'll send you guys um, some, some hard copies or soft copies uh, in a few weeks. Uh, but really what I want to comment on is um, we definitely work with a lot of different companies. You guys have all been in a lot of different companies. Um, cultures are very different, um, honestly, from founder and CEO perspectives. And so I think it's important to keep in mind when you think about sort of how to bring that activist mentality into your own culture, uh, sort of what it means to you. And hopefully some of the ideas today um, resonated. Uh, there are definitely some things here uh, that we can talk about in terms of sort of how we help. But when I think about it from a benefits perspective, uh, one thing that I sort of feel very, that's very important to comment on is that a lot of the programs that uh, companies want to add today uh, are, are let's, be, let's be frank, it's a cost plus model, right? Some of these um, benefits do cost money. Um, and then we have also this increase in healthcare costs, uh, increase in employer cost sharing. I know a lot of tech companies offer free health plans, um, but the employer still bears a share. And so when you go and talk to the finance team, the uncomfortable truth of all of this is, you know, how do we basically make sure that we are actually getting, you know, the, the fabled ROI? If you have the right culture, the soft ROI makes sense. If you have a culture where you have to balance the soft and the hard ROI, one of the things that sort of we really think about is don't ignore the structure of your health plans. So when we think about parental benefits here uh, and talk to a lot of companies about this, uh, yes, we want to offer the helpers of the world. We want to offer the mavens of the world. How do we basically structure the health plans in a way where we can actually carve out and give you guys back budget to actually offer those types of programs at probably a flat to neutral PPM for the coming year? A lot of this comes down to having the right philosophy around approaching uh, the annual renewal, which is probably what a lot of you guys right now are going through. It is probably safe to say that uh, a lot of the answers today that you guys get are around the annual cost of healthcare inflation being about eight to 10%. You're probably getting an eight to 10% renewal if you're lucky. Um, but if you really think about the, the way the game theory works with health insurance carriers, it's actually a lot more complex and deep than that. And so some of the answers that we're really trying to look at, in addition to parental benefits, is how do we basically structure um, the rates and the plan designs in a way where it actually does fit within the actual forecasted budget of a company. And that's something that's very challenging to do but that's essentially our mission. Um, and so quickly, right off the bat here, uh, obviously there's a lot of folks that think employee benefits are very important. As you can see from the top two survey results, there's two pieces here. And the way that I like to think about this um, is that I obviously come from a marketing background. Um, people professionals and HR professionals, you know, really have to be representing the, the brand and the culture internally. And so we do definitely actually have very similar mindsets in this case. And everything that sort of Rahab and Denise talked about in terms of parental benefits, should, they're right, it, it may not affect everyone, but the optics of actually how they, they actually matter to the rest of the employees, you can actually expect uh, and, and uh, anticipate sort of how it's received by, by employees, single employees, people without kids, may actually join a company uh, just because you offer that type of benefit. That progressive generational shift is happening and you know, we will in 10 years probably not even be talking about the fact that this is progressive. This is basically just, we've all shifted 10 years in the future and we're now looking at Generation Z being like, oh my God, they're, they're crazy, they want X, Y, and Z. But this is kind of how cultures move and I think we just have to be mindful 
uh, of sort of how we are representing that to the folks that we actually want to hire and retain. Um, there are some companies that are looking at this in 2019. Again, this year in particular, you can see a lot of the uh, regulations around the ACA, around the employer health insurance market, around insurance carriers that are actually consolidating and merging. Um, that entire market this year is pretty volatile. And so I think just to kind of bring this holistically into sort of how to frame this for a company, uh, those economics have to be kept in mind and really delved into when talking about how you actually frame and offer this for the, for the employees and actually present this to the C-suite. So how long does an employee have to be eligible for parental leave pay? Uh, again, based off of 150 respondents. Um, actually, just quick show of hands, how many of you come from companies that are around 100 to, uh, so say, 250 in here? Okay. And under 100? Under 100, okay. And over 250? Everyone else, okay. And, okay. So this definitely sort of has an impact in sort of the ways that uh, you have necessarily the resources to structure the policies. Um, there's a small percentage of, of folks that can actually uh, uh, structure the, the policies based off of a tenure perspective, but that's actually quite challenging from a systems perspective. Uh, a lot of companies usually either do a day of hire or essentially um, somewhere be between the interim of uh, less than a year. Actually, the sample size of this actually goes, the distribution goes uh, mostly date of hire, um, three to six months is the next highest, and then six, six months to a year is actually the, the second highest. So how long are you paid parental leave? Um, to, to Hobbs' point, um, some of this is actually based off of statutory requirements, right? But you can see the distribution here, if you can actually see these light green squares, apologies if you can't see that, but there are some of these bleeding edge companies that are starting to basically say, fight the, the norms. Um, the semantics here actually matter. If you look at the, the notion of actually even sort of framing around maternity versus paternity, um, versus thinking about something in terms of sort of primary and secondary, you can see obviously when the semantics sort of reflect the culture, um, that when you have a secondary um, type of leave policy that is actually much more uh, what we call sort of gender neutral. Uh, and that's actually just an important framing perspective, which is how do you actually want to think about um, even framing the leave policies at your company. Most companies that, I, that we speak to in the Bay Area and around here are really trying to start thinking about this from more of a gender neutral perspective. Uh, big, big props to the gentleman back there and the, and the one guy there that left, but really trying to bring more men into this conversation uh, is very important because as we all know, a, a lot of the, you know, senior executives at a lot of companies are, are men, uh, and they need to be brought into this conversation as well. And hopefully that's changing though. Um, companies offer the same parental benefits to everyone. So again, I will say this is a bias distribution because we are more sort of bi-coastal dependent. Uh, if you were gonna ask a company that was, you know, probably a little bit more situated in a, in a, in a sort of a more half blue, half red state, uh, you might get some sort of differences here. Uh, but again, our sample size is usually sort of bi-coastal. Um, but most companies we do talk to that actually have people that think about culture are definitely trying to think about how to make it gender neutral, especially because of the fact that we probably grew up in families where we may have had uh, one parent working and one parent at home. Uh, it's more rare these days to not have a dual income household. And so um, there is the issue essentially of, of fairness bringing men into the equation here and talking about that um, will actually help push these policies forward a little bit. Childcare benefits. Right now, the vast majority of companies do not offer childcare benefits, but obviously this is something that we definitely want to push forward as well. Again, back to the issues of sort of like gender inclusion and unfairness. Um, there are a lot of single parents out there these days that are men. Um, there are people that uh, have long commutes and dual income households. And so, you know, one of the things around just even talking about that today is just how do we actually be more flexible and offer these type of benefits to our workforces? Um, and how do we actually make the economics work as well? Other parental benefits, Rahab mentioned a, a long list as did Denise. There's a long list of, of actual benefits that um, don't actually take a lot of money, but just take a little creativity. So I wanna also, you know, engage in a thought exercise, either here or in the focus groups around small things. For example, we just have little onesies in those gift baskets for you. 
uh, that's a huge difference of just giving that to somebody to, to sort of show them that you've uh, thought about uh, uh, that, that person and their, and their child. So sometimes it's just as important to sort of have the, the sort of like the symbolism of what you do. It can be money, but it can also just be a small token. It's the symbol and the embodied sort of um, culture of what you're trying to convey. Uh, and so we really just ask folks, uh, yeah, there is providing parents and maternity and an adoption program. Um, some of these programs are actually offered via carriers. Carriers are actually trying to become uh, more inclusive. But I will tell you one thing about fertility benefits is that if you do offer it via carrier, which a lot of plans have them today um, as riders on top of plans, you're not going to get the best employee experience from an insurance carrier uh, on some of these more progressive benefits, right? The reason that the helpers of the world exist and the mavens of the world exist um, is because essentially what you're doing is you're carving out a self-funded program so that you can actually form fit it um, to your culture. So it's just something to be mindful of is that whether you are basically sort of thinking about it from a branding perspective or you're thinking about it from a, a realistic sort of employee perspective, really depends on whether you want to work with the insurance carriers on the programs or whether you actually want to work um, with the best of breed vendor. And also, one thing on the fertility, uh, as I think Rahab mentioned, if you go through the insurance carriers, uh, the optics of sort of what people interpret today as fertility, as you, some of you may know, is that it usually does not include egg freezing, right? So you have a lot of employees basically coming and saying, I want what Facebook has, right? Or I want what Google offers. And then a lot of companies say, well, we have, you know, fertility or infertility benefits, but the structures are much more constrained uh, when you offer it through a carrier. And so just be mindful of the interpretations that some employees may have uh, when you do try to offer these benefits because the messaging around exactly what these programs offer is very important to make sure that you and them are, are on the same page. And this is a grab bag here. Uh, we had an open form field of other ideas that we were trying to collect from the industry. And a lot of it actually comes around flexible work, right? So one, back to sort of the, the symbolism of around providing something where you are acknowledging the fact that for most employees, time is the biggest and most precious resource. Whatever the employee wants to do with that time is basically sort of fundamentally acknowledging that whether you have children or not children, uh, you know, give employees the trust and the uh, autonomy to essentially do their work and, and have flexibility in how they manage and organize their own lives. Um, that is definitely also a generational shift that we've seen a lot of the companies that we work with don't even have offices anymore. They have thousands of employees across the country. Don't even, don't even ask me how we do open enrollment meetings, but thousands of employees across the countries. And really, it's going down to, you know, commute times are getting longer, right? Uh, our infrastructure in this country is not that great. Um, and it's just taking people longer to do what they need to do, giving them back that time to actually figure out how to do their best work. In addition to childcare, in addition to certain options, it's just designing a policy that just makes sense for people. Um, gift boxes and, and, and cards, again, this, this small thing here, if you don't wanna think about even larger parental benefits first, like fertility, there's a crawl, walk, run approach that you can even take at a 100-person company or a 50-person company, which is just start doing something so that you can actually test out um, how the employees receive the culture, receive the message that you're putting out there and then just keep building on top of that so that over time, what you have is essentially a stacking function of, of areas of benefits that you can essentially message and offer that's been back tested with employee feedback, doing employee pulse surveys, and essentially building up to something at some point when the company grows, you have the systems, the architecture, the level of sophistication, and the resources internally to do something like, you know, a, a tenured leave policy um, and some of those other um, systems and programs. This one here was really great actually also just offering uh, a fridge and back to the lactation uh, room idea. This is something that's a very small thing, right? But, but it's basically you can have a separate fridge in your office um, for breast milk, right? Hopefully no engineer will open the door, you gotta label it correctly, but this is, this is just one of those symbols that speaks to um, you know, reflecting gender equality and inclusion di diversity within an office. Um, I think someone brought this up around sort of like group lunches and, and breastfeeding rooms. Again, 
even the symbolism of actually besides just having like a water closet, it's a room that has, you know, a nice ambiance and really is reflective of how you want to take care of people. When people see other people being taken care of, they know that they're going to get taken care of themselves. And that's really sort of the, the wider, broader message I think a lot of companies um, want to send. So, so hopefully that was uh, interesting. We've started to open source some of our actual materials. This is broader than just the parental benefits, but I wanted to make it available. Um, and you can actually get this online and on sites. And uh, that's it.